All right, so I am just north of uh, Milan at a at the first international leaf motor press event when they've let us try try out the cars here. We've already seen the T03 on the channel, but now this is the C10 model. A D segment SUV, of course, this is the most popular electric car segment. Every brand has a car in this segment so as i always say you have to bring your a game if you want to compete in this segment of course the market leader in this position is the tesla model y undoubtedly right and my first impressions with this car is that it definitely gives you model y vibes at a much cheaper price point i've got my new friends at the back from martinique hello hello everybody <laughs> They told me they don't speak much English and I don't speak much French. I, I get as far as bonjour. <laughs> so, but we have agreed on one thing, that this is a great car. Let me tell you why. Welcome to another episode of The Future is Electric. So let me start by explaining who Leap Motor are, because if you haven't heard of them, I frankly wouldn't blame you, right? So this is a very new car company founded just in 2015. And they actually produced their first cars by 2019 and they sold a thousand units during that year. But fast forward a few years and things have moved very fast. Up to 2023, they had sold in that calendar year 144,000 units. In just five years of growth, they reached that sales target. It took Tesla nine years to get to that point. Now, of course, they are originally Chinese. However, the international operations are going to be taken care of with a new joint venture they have with the Stellantis Group. Stellantis, of course, the parent company who owns brands such as Peugeot, Citroën, Fiat, and many, many more. So we have a legacy car maker here jumping on board with a Chinese automaker. And I think this is a partnership which is definitely going to work. Because being a new brand, one of the things which would worry me is how is the reliability of this car going to be? How is the servicing of this car going to be? And the fact that they are joining with the Stellantis Group means here in Europe, there's over 200 dealerships to start with, which are gonna be there to service these cars. Now, one of the problems I've heard that the Chinese brands are having here in Europe is the part supply. So they've managed to get a lot of cars here quick and they've sold them, but the supply of parts has been a bit lacking from some brands. And this is where Leap Motor, through this Stellantis partnership, hope to distinguish themselves. All right, so what about the car itself? So first impressions, even though this comes in at quite a low price point, right, for this segment, 20, around, sitting around 26,000 euros, that's after 2024 government incentives in Malta. The build quality is still high. In terms of the ride quality, one of the big things here is the fact that they're using something known as the cell to chassis technology. We'll, of course, go into detail in this in my tech review linked below. But essentially, this is a technology that uh, all the automakers, I believe, to my knowledge, have said they will move towards. So this is when the battery is an inherent part of the design of the chassis. It is providing the rigidity of the car. And it doesn't just provide the rigidity, it's actually around 40%, makes the body 40% stronger than a traditional car because you've got that honeycomb shape which comes from the battery cells, which is actually providing the structural rigidity. This means it should result in a more um, pleasant driving experience because the body is much more rigid. But I'll be honest here, I don't think the average driver is going to feel a difference there. Having said that, it is great that you're getting the latest technology. 
So in terms of power, this has a 200 plus horse power electric motor, which is found in the rear. Um, we have spoken about in the channel. Oh. <laughs> the air conditioning just came to life. I didn't do anything. <laughs> what happened? Okay, it's shut up now. So, <laughs> in terms of power, um, it is plenty, right? One of the things they are stressing, and to be fair, it is um, a relief that finally we have an automaker, as young as they are, who have actually prioritized this. So they're not interested in having an SUV, a family SUV, which does zero to 60 in under six seconds, right? Everybody else is trying to get there for no real good <laughs> reason. This does have all the power you would need, I can tell you that. But it isn't aggressive, right, in the way it delivers that power, which is actually a very nice and reassuring thing. So I am very happy with that. All right, so there's three, actually four driving modes to choose from. There's three standard ones, your Echo, your Normal and your Sport, and then there's also a custom one where you can fiddle around the settings yourself. The regen strength is tied to the driving mode. So we have seen one other automaker on the channel doing this, but after that, it's only this brand which is doing that. So it's basically in your eco mode, which is the least powerful, and in your sport mode, which is the most powerful, you have the strongest level of region. And then in the normal mode, the car will just coast like any internal combustion car would coast. So how is the regen feeling? So it's, uh, it's linear, so it does not increase the strength as the car um, starts to coast even more. It sort of reduces the strength instantly and then keeps reducing at the same pace. It's still comfortable, you do have to get used to it. Um, what's good here though is that they do have a one pedal driving option which I have tried out which literally means you can drive this car around the city using just the accelerator pedal because as soon as you lift off then the accelerate the deceleration is much stronger right and it will um, decelerate at a, a rate which will stop the car completely without using the brake pedal so that's very nice to see so in terms of tech and safety, the car is literally fully loaded, right? Now, they haven't done their NCAP European testing yet. It is scheduled to uh, um, be done by the end of this year. However, they have all the technology required, they believe, to achieve a full five-star. Now, one of the things that's actually been added to that NCAP uh, five-star rating um, very recent this year, uh, summer this year, is the requirement for cars to have a camera looking at the driver, which essentially checks if he or she is always with his eyes or her eyes on the road. And that camera is in this case located just here on the A-pillar to the left. Um, similar place to where we saw it in the uh, T03. It's more prevalent in the T03, right? Um, here there's a nice, nice, there's a, a black sort of glass in front of the camera, so it feels a bit less um, intrusive, which is nice to see. Um, but uh, this is a requirement that we're gonna see, be seeing literally in every car if they want to achieve their top level safety standards. So one very interesting point I, I found about this car is of course this has been released in China now for, for a while and they actually launched it in China with 800 volt architecture and the European and international model is going to be a 400 volt architecture model. What's the difference there? Well, the 800 volt model in China can actually charge the car on rapid charging in half the amount of time. So they have the technology to do it, right? But they're opting to keep the slower and in inverted commas 400 volt for Europe. And when asked why this is the case, um, they were very blunt, what's the, what's, what's the word here? Um, it's basically the European architecture, the European charging network, 
is not there yet. We do not have 800. We do. <laughs> Link keep assist there going off. We do not have the 800 volt chargers here in Europe like they have abundantly in China. So it's not even worth putting this technology in the cars at this point. Although it, they've promised it will come in the future. But that just goes to show, unfortunately, how far Europe is behind China when it comes to the electrification. Not just in the cars, but also in the infrastructure. So we really, really need to up our game here. So I've just returned back here from the trip. I want to run you through a bit the efficiency figure. So this car has a 69.9 kilowatt hour battery and the rated range is 424 kilometers. That's on highways and the urban test cycle is 574 kilometers. So what did I actually get in our drive here today? So my drive back when I was driving the car, remember I had the two guys at the back as well, 50 kilometer trip one hour duration. We had both highway and city road, so a bit of a mix of both. And I averaged an efficiency of 14.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, which implies a real world range here today in Milan. Um, with, to be fair, good temperature for electric vehicles, so it's not too, too cold. We were at around 18 degrees Celsius. 485 kilometers real world driving range and I have no doubt you will be able to exceed that in Moldova. That's a pretty good number, especially remembering the size vehicle we are dealing with here. So D segment vehicle, pretty big car, pretty heavy car, right? So I like those efficiency numbers a lot. So let me walk you through a bit this interior cabin immediately immediately it reminds you of uh, tesla in its design simplicity so you've got this main center screen here um, which is designed in-house at leap motor like 60 percent of the components of this vehicle and it is powered by a very powerful processor which means the it is extremely responsive um, as uh, and fluid as you would hope and you do get the performance over here now no apple carplay or android auto yet um, but it is promised to be coming um, however the actual os itself i think is very well designed again it draws a lot of inspiration from the tesla interface which in my my mind is one of the best out there Different to Tesla, Model Y, right? You do get a second screen, an instrument cluster screen um, right in front of you here. Again, same crispness and sharpness, so that is there as well. Um, the steering wheel, especially with this uh, light um, silver trim and definitely the buttons, right? It feels like they are straight out of the Tesla factory. Um, the design here is very similar, but let me tell you, Sometimes with Tesla, they say the build quality is not that great. I am not getting those vibes over here. And I think the build quality is, is very nice. And different to some other Chinese brands we've seen on the channel, I think the interior, which in this case is the dark, they basically have two versions to choose from. The dark, which is the one I'm in, which is like this black purple, which is very nice actually. Or I'd say a more traditional look, which is the light brown. Um, personally, but this personal taste, I prefer this one. Um, that is the choice you have for the interior and possibly the showstopper here has to be the two meter uh, squared glass roof up here, which is absolutely beautiful. Especially I was riding in the back. It's just a great, a great place to be with the, with the glass over you. And it does have an electronic sunshade, which you can close from right here. Um, and despite you having to close it, I've seen some other cars on the channel, right? Where the the sunshade, when they add the, 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 the electronic sunshade, the thickness of, of this part of the, 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 the sector because of how they put the motors and whatnot, is generally really thick and really ugly in that sense. I think this is very well designed and you do not get that vibe. I think despite there being a sunshade and it's not just the smooth glass, which is 
of course the most beautiful one you can have but despite there being the sunshade i think they've done a very nice job here with uh, with the design and how it works etc um plenty of storage space we do not get a flat floor in the front but you do get a very big flat floor in the in the back and it is extremely comfortable back there boot is very big okay i do not know the exact size but it is very very big and there is also a frunk because this is designed as an electric vehicle from the ground up so they've made sure to utilize the space in the front as well all right i mean that's really it i do recommend you go try the car yourselves um but anyone who tells you that you should like not take these cars made in china has not understood where the auto industry has gone and is going so despite being such a young brand i think that reassurance you are getting that partnership with the stellantis group i think should make this car quite one to consider for yourself the quality is good the price point is excellent so definitely keep your eye out for uh, leap motor i think we're going to be hearing a lot from them in the future they have a lot of big plans actually they're going to be releasing models every single year um, for the foreseeable future with a target to sell half a million vehicles by 2030 so um that's quite a statement right there and we'll, we're gonna see how that plays out if you enjoyed this review make sure you hit the like button and subscribe and if you're interested in the tech of the vehicle make sure you check out my tech focus review being linked down below but as always i hope i've convinced you that the future is electric